you know, I am a Bible believer, and I am a man, and I like militant songs. You know, I like, you know, hold the fourth, fort onward Christian soldiers, you know, storm the village, run everybody through with the sword for, in the name of Jesus and all that. But there's also another side of me. I like it when we had these two ladies sing and that sweet feminine voice singing so sweetly and tenderly and that voice that does something to my heart and gets me just the tender side. And uh, I like that. I like, I like a combination of both of it. I like the militant stuff, but I like the tender stuff too because our, our, our Savior is militant. He's going to come back at the second advent and kill everybody. Amen. <laughs> but he came, to, he came at the first advent to save everybody that would trust in him. And he's long-suffering, and he's a loving Savior. He's a wonderful Savior. And uh, I am very, very thankful for what he's done for me. And, and just those kind of songs like that, they're a blessing. Thank you, ladies. I do appreciate it. Um, if you were here last night, you know I preached to you. And uh, what I said was, uh, it's pretty tough to deal with. I mean, we can take preaching on anybody except ourselves. And uh, that's what it was about last night. I was preaching to you about looking at yourself first and dealing with yourself and not everybody else. And so tonight, Lord willing, I'm going to preach at your heart again. uh, If I preach what I believe the Lord would have me to preach. And so uh, you got some preaching last night and you're going to get some straightforward preaching uh, to you tonight. Now this morning, this is more of an encouragement, and uh, I want you to think about this. So I got I got uh, one encouragement and two, uh, you know, get right with God. So let's see. So that's about. Hopefully, it all balance out good for you, and it'll it'll be yeah. That's right. You're gonna see. You got to get some Joel Osteen here. I tell you, you don't have to worry about that here. But I want you to take your Bible, and you can just stand for a moment if you would. And turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 20. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 20. And um, a very familiar verse. And I'm going to make some application out of it here this morning. And I want to encourage us. Now, this message that I'm going to preach to you, and obviously it might be a little bit different because this is a different crowd. I preached this a few months ago at my church right after we went through a terrible, horrible split and lost right at half our church. And I preached this to encourage my people. And the Lord gave me a few practical thoughts on this. And so I want to preach this to encourage you. See, you haven't been through a split. You're not at the same place my church is at. But the the same practical truths that I'm going to go over with you today does fit your church. It does fit your Christian life, and it will help you. And and, and I want you to understand that I understand that the book of Matthew, that this is in the book of Matthew, and I know who Matthew is written to doctrinally. And I also understand that in this passage this morning, I'm going to read to you, our Lord is more specifically speaking to his disciples So we know that doctrinally. However, there is good practical application that we can make out of this that I believe will fit into the church age. The disciples, in my opinion, are a type. I actually have a whole message on that. The disciples as a type of the church. Obviously, they're not the church. They're before the cross. Christ hasn't been to the cross yet. But they are a type of the church, and you can learn some things from them if you look at it like that. And the disciples were taught by the Lord Jesus Christ to pray in Jesus' name. And you find that in John chapter 14 and verse number 3. And then they're taught here to gather in the name of Jesus. And notice what he says there in Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 20. He says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He said, if you just have two or three that will gather together in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst, he'll show up, and, uh, 
And what he means is this. It's, it's, we know that when we come in as believers, we bring Jesus Christ in with us all, when we come in. He's in us. I'm in Christ. I'm indwelt by Christ. But this is something different. It's like, uh, it's like if somebody came up and said, uh, you should have been here last Sunday when brother, when brother Aaron preached. The Lord really showed up. Now, now, what the person would be saying is he wouldn't be saying he wouldn't say that the Lord don't ever show up. He just showed up that Sunday. He just mean it was a supernatural, like a, a, a more of a, a collective presence that you felt something different, something unique. And I believe when we apply this, this is saying this, that look, where two or three are gathered in my name. And I'm going to go over some of this and what all this means. He says, I'll be in the midst. In other words, right there in the middle of that meeting, I believe there's a promise that can even apply to us in the church age that Jesus Christ will show up with us, not us bringing him into the service, but him being in the service. You know what I'm talking about? And, and listen, if we've got him in the service, if we've got him in the church, we don't need anything else. And you need to believe that. In fact, you need to believe that today, and I hope that you will. And so I just want to preach to you a very few, for a very few minutes this morning on this subject. I want to preach to you about a small crowd with a big God. Amen. A small crowd with a big God. Pastor, would you pray for me, and then we'll, we'll go on. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you just for today, Lord. Thank you for being able to make it out here to this place. And yes. Meet, Lord. Thank yes. You for the fellowship you've already had, the songs have already been sung, Lord. And God, yes. Please. Please. Amen. 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 Thank you. You can be seated. Now I have three points I want to get across to you this morning, and that will be the message. Point number one. God has always worked with small numbers. And if you read your Bible, you know that. God has always worked with small numbers. And the small numbers here in this verse happen to be Two or three. That's not that many. Now listen, we got that one taken care of this morning. There's way more than two or three here. As a matter of fact, I thought with it being, I thought with it being on a, on a Tuesday morning and people working or whatever, I didn't know I'd have this many to preach to. So I'm, I'm thankful. This is great. I'm glad that you came back this morning. I'm glad that you're here. So we have the two or three. But I want you to understand something because in this day and time, and listen, I'm not trying to put down no church movement. I'm not trying to be critical here, but I'm going to be honest with you. Some of our Bible-believing brethren some years ago got into this, this uh, and we have, listen, we have bus ministry at my church. I'm not against that. We have it. I, we have door knocking. I'm all for it. But church became like, like herding cattle in. You know, well, I want 100 on visitation today, and I want 200 on visitation today. And, and we got this idea that God is not really blessing the outfit unless you've got 15 to 20 buses going the first year you start the church and hundreds in the church. And what we got is this idea that like, like, God, like God really shows if your ministry is great and your church is great, if you're doing something great, if it's really big and really expanding, and, God, and that just shows that God's on you. And then if you just got a handful over here, that shows that you're just lazy or neglectful or you're not doing enough or whatever. Right. And listen, listen, if you're a pastor in the Bible-believing movement and you've got some of that coming in from some of the fundamental brethren, that stuff will get a hold of you, especially if you're a young pastor and you have to watch that stuff yeah. because it's all a lie from the devil. Yeah. It's not true. I'm not saying all the churches are this way because we, there was a day and time where there were some good churches and they, they built them up right. But most churches nowadays, most churches nowadays in this part of Laodicea, if you see them booming, there's something wrong with them. I didn't say every one of them, okay? I didn't say every one of them. I said most of them, and I will stand by that statement. There's something wrong with them. As a matter of fact, when Jesus Christ came through there in his ministry, he parted the crowds, brother. He run folks off. And I'm not saying being obstinate and mean-spirited and run people off. You know that I don't believe that, and your pastor certainly doesn't believe that. But if you preach that book, and you stay with truth, and you do the right thing, you're just not going to have people flock at this day and time flocking at the doors wanting to get into a place like this. But it doesn't mean that you're not in the perfect will of God and that God is not going to send you some people. He will in his time. 
But you just need to realize God has always worked with small numbers. Remember Gideon's army? What did God do with Gideon's army? He said, you got 32,000, we're narrowing it down to 300. Now listen, you say, yeah, but he still had 300. <laughs> 300, any of you that's been in any type of military service, you know 300 is nothing to fight a war. He went from 32,000 to 300. He said, I want a small group to get this thing done for me. And so he narrowed it down. Uh, I think about uh, uh, the 12 disciples. He picked 12, and the Bible said they turned the world upside down. And one of them was a devil from the beginning. So it really just had 11. I think about the 10 lepers that you read about over there in Luke chapter 17. You remember that story? Listen, all those 10 lepers, they all had three things in common. They all had the same condition. They had leprosy. And you know leprosy is a type of sin. They could be a type of lost people. Number one, they all had the same condition. Number two, they all made the same cry. Lord, have mercy on me. And then number three, they all got the same cleansing. They, God, God cleaned and restored every one of them. You know what that's a picture of spiritually for us? Is that 10 people coming to the Lord, crying out for mercy, and God saving their soul from hell, and one of them actually doing something with it. Because only one of them, it was a small minority. Listen, even in churches, it's just a small group that do right. Yep. Many times, it's just a small minority. One out, listen, one out of 10, one out of 10 took the time to turn back around and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you just did for me. But it's small numbers, folks. Do you realize when God gets ready to pick a nation, there's only one nation that matters to God? Listen, I'm glad I'm born in America. Thank God for America. I'm glad I was born and raised here. I'm, I thank God for all the people that fought for when I wasn't even born so we could assemble freely here this morning. But in the eyes of God now, not, not, not in our patriotic ways, in the eyes of God, there's only one nation that's ever mattered and ever will matter. As a nation, one, just one, and that's the nation of Israel. And he took a small group, the smallest group, not big in number. And when God was on that nation, nobody could touch them. Yeah. You know why? Because when I read in this Bible over and over and over, God's always worked with small numbers. And it's always been the small numbers of people that were really serious about God. Yeah. And listen, folks, let's just, let's just personalize it now. We as Bible believers make up a very small number of what's actually in the body of Christ. Did you know that? If you say the body of Christ, everybody in the world that's saved, if this was it. Bible believers about, let me get my pinky about like that. But God works with small numbers. He always had. And listen, it's the minority of people that get saved in this world. It's a minority of people as Christians that do right. And I believe that number is going to continue to decrease as we get closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I like Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 10 where it says, For who hath despised the day of small things? Yeah. Don't despise the day of small things. Listen to me. We have got to look at this thing like Christ looks at it. Now, when I went through this church split, and our auditorium is, it's, I, it's not as wide as this, but it's, it's about the same thing. Uh, I think we had 300, we, we, can, we got 320 chairs. We had 320 chairs in our auditorium. We have an auditorium shaped like this, and it's got chairs like this. And so when that church split took place, we said, man, this is one thing we can do for us to help us psychologically. We took a bunch of chairs out yeah. so it didn't look as empty. Yeah. You can say, well, I think that's worldly. Well, I think you're crazy, man. Listen, I felt a lot better taking a bunch of chairs out so it didn't look so empty, all right? Yeah. You say, well, it made, if it made me feel better, then it make other people feel better so I didn't come in there with a dragon pooched out lip, you know. <laughs> but, but, but listen, when we went through this church split, and we go from 200 people on, on Sunday or around that to 100 people. 
That was real tough. That was real tough. It was depressing. It took a lot of wind out of me. It's the first time in 30 years of ministry I've ever been through anything like that. But looking back at it now and where we're at now, I see exactly that that had to happen. There's no way that our church could go forward with it like it was. The spirit in our church has never been better. And do you know now that since I've gotten through the sorrow and the sadness of people that I loved and invested in their lives and, and, and I thought were there for me and they weren't for me and they didn't, <laughs> didn't, they didn't love me like I loved them. After I've gotten through all that heartache, do you know right now that I am happier now at that church than I've ever been? I enjoy going to church more. I enjoy preaching there more. I enjoy pastoring more. We have more liberty in the services. Amen. And here's the truth of it now. If God said, I'll give you the option. Go back with the people and go back with the money. Because now we're having some money issues too. We had to drop some missionaries and all kind of stuff. Because a lot of the people, they left with the, with the dough, you know. He said, would you go back? And have all them people come back or, or keep it like it is with a half the crowd and with more things to concern about. No question about it. I keep it just like it is right now. Because that group that's there with us now, they love me and they love the Lord. And we all agree on where we're trying to go for the Lord. And you know what made our church better? It wasn't adding. It was taken away. And if you're not careful, you'll let the devil get this stuff in your mind, in your heart. We got to have this. We need to do this. No, no. Go back and look at the Bible. Go back and read the Bible. God always has worked with small things, small insignificant people, small numbers. You know why? Because we have a big God in a small crowd. And folks, if I, I'm trying to leave you with this this morning. All you need is the Lord Jesus Christ and his perfect book. And you can go and do, and this church can be exactly what God wants it to be. And after all, isn't that the goal? Don't you want this church to be exactly what God wants it to be? That's the goal. It doesn't matter what it looks like to what everybody else is saying churches ought to be. It doesn't matter. What matters is what does God say this thing ought to be? So I want you to think about that and hopefully that will encourage you. Number two, God will gather according to this uh, passage, will gather with those that gather in his name. And notice that's what he said there. He said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name. And it doesn't matter where. It says where. It does, it, there's not a particular place. And, and the amount is two or three. Listen, listen, you don't have to, you don't have to have church pews. You don't have to have a piano. You don't have to have this building. You don't have to have none of it. We have a nice sanctuary, a nice sanctuary where I was at. They built that thing before I, before I got there. I mean, uh, I didn't have nothing to do with it, but it's just a nice sanctuary for a country church and all that kind of stuff. But you know what I told them one time? I stood up, I said, it wouldn't matter if an F5 tornado come through here and hit our church directly, direct on and carried it to Union City, which is a city about 30 miles from us. I said, that wouldn't, would not stop the church. The church is not the facilities, it's the people. Right. And sometimes we get this idea, you know, well, we don't even own our building and we're renting. And what, that doesn't matter. Did you read about the early church in the Bible? They're meeting from house to house. It doesn't matter if you meet out there under a pup tent. It doesn't matter if you meet in somebody's garage or their living room. What about the underground church all over this world? There's people hiding out, hiding out in places in the woods and in people's homes. They don't have anything like this. They don't have nothing like this. They would love to have a place that they could rent like this. And not on just rent like this and the government not fool with them. They don't have it. But I tell you what they do have. Much more than the average American church has. 
because they have him in the midst of them. And the average American church has got everything they could ever want, but they don't have him in the midst of them. You know what he is? You read about him over there in Revelation chapter 3 in the Laodicean church. He's on the outside knocking and wanting to come in. And you know what, what people are saying? You know what the average uh, church is saying to the Lord Jesus Christ now? I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. We've already got the bulletins printed for this Sunday. We've already got everything scheduled. And I'm sorry, Jesus, you know, we're too busy having church to have you in here. That's happening all over the place. It's even getting into some of the Bible-believing works. They're getting as worldly and as, and as uh, try, trying to seek the world's entertainment to draw crowds. They're doing that now. People that were raised to believe that book and dispensationally and rightly divide it and raised to preach on the street, be a witness, they're even going to that stuff. Because all the pressure that's put on them. Now, you know what you, you and I need here at this church that can encourage you? We need to, number one, gather with the right motive. Number two, gather with the right message. And number three, gather for the right man. That's, that's gathering in his name. If we're going to gather in his name, that means, number one, I, I gather for the right motive. I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I want to obey his command to assemble with like-minded believers. Number two, I gather with the right message. It's coming out of the King James Bible and I've got a pastor that'll give it to me. You have that here. And then number three, I gather for the right man. I'm gathering for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe he promises that he'll be in the midst with us. He'll show up. The, the, the Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. You're never going to go wrong bragging on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're never going to go wrong praising the name of Jesus. You're never going to go wrong setting aside a time and saying, God, we want you to feel welcome here. If nobody feels welcome here, we want you to feel welcome here. Amen. You're never going to go wrong. And he loves that. And he'll show up in that. Yeah. And I've been in meetings over and over and over where you have a little crowd like this. And God just blow in. Yeah. Or you can meet with a whole bunch of people, hundreds or thousands. And it's, God's not within a million miles of it. It's, it stinks to them. Because they're not gathering his name. And then finally, God promises his presence to those who meet in his name. Notice what he says. He says, there I am in the midst of them. It's a collective presence. Like I said, it's more than just having Christ inside of you as a believer. And it's, listen, it's just two or three people who agree in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, his name is the Word, according to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. So we must gather and make the capital W, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the small case W, the Word of God. We must gather and focus on that, and that's what you do here. You know, I like this song we sing. It's like a little praise song. You ever heard that song, He's All I Need? He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. You know what this church ought to sing? He's all we need. He's all we need. Jesus is all we need. Listen, and it's funny that we were talking about some of this stuff before church and different things, and you didn't have any idea. He has no idea what I was going to preach. But folks, can I encourage you? Don't be in a big hurry. You know, well, I'd like to get this, and we'd like to do this, and we'd like to own this, and we'd like to move this, or whatever. I know that. I don't blame you. I would be like that too. I remember what it was like to be young one time, a young preacher just with plenty of energy. Now I've just settled down a little bit. <laughs> Listen, folks. You've got right now what you need. And owning facilities and 200 more people and whatever is not going to bring that in. You've already got that. What you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
his book being preached and people that gather together in his name with the right motive hearing the right message gather for the right man and you've got that and what you're promised with is a big God with a small crowd I don't think we understand how important that is but it's very important. Very, very important. And I, this is my prayer. I hope God continues to send souls here. I hope he grows this thing. I would like to see you get your own building. Whatever buses, if you choose to go that way and get, I'd like to see you get that stuff. And God can do it. Listen, don't you know God can do that anytime he wants to? He can snap his fingers and give it all to you. You say, well, why doesn't God give it to us like that sometimes? Number one, maybe he knows he don't, he don't want you to have it right now for some reason. Or number two, he knows you don't need it. Can I reemphasize this as I get ready to close here in this morning? The American church, the American church is so messed up. Some of these people that left complained that when this split I was, we were going through about not having enough for the church, for the youth. I'm like, we have a youth revival. We have vacation Bible school. We have some stuff for them. We have a youth minister. Um, but that's never enough. We don't have enough going on. I'm like, well, why don't, you find, why don't you find modern day youth ministry in the King James Bible for me? Please show me. Show me chapter and verse. Show me chapter and verse where you have your whole youth department and you turn it over to them and it's all about entertainment and they're like a separate entity in the church and they're not, I want you to show that to me. Can't none of them show it to me. They got all that modern day youth movement. They got that from the world and these lukewarm sissy churches. That's where they got all that stuff from. And we here in America, we got this big idea. We got to have a nice building. And, and listen, I'm not against a nice building. We got one. I'm not against all that stuff. But folks, we are so far removed from what it is to be a, an actual local New Testament church. Have you ever studied that thing? I know in the book of Acts now, doctrinally, you can get in a mess. But I'm not talking about the doctrinal stuff. I'm talking about the beginning of the church and how it started as a New Testament church. Do you realize what they didn't have over there? What they didn't have? But do you realize what they did have? They had the presence and power of God. And that's all that you need. Not just in this church collectively, but in your private life, in your family. And then personally. And I want to really encourage you this morning. This is a great opportunity you have a very good pastor. You have the right book. There's some good people I met. Unless you've got me fooled, I think you're good people. And you, you want to do something for the Lord. And all that you need is the power and the presence of Jesus Christ. And that's all. That's all. You don't need anything else. But, but, but if you don't believe that here, you're going to be dissatisfied and maybe never reach the potential God wants to have for you. And I've got some good news as I end this thing. We have his book. We have the two or three. We're gathered here in his name. Jesus Christ is not outside knocking, trying to get in. He's here. He's welcome. And we have a small crowd with a big God. And that big God is in our midst right here this morning. And just because there's some kind, not some kind of supernatural you know, aroma in the air and, and somebody's not flipping off, you know, like a fish out of water and speaking in tongues and all that nonsense, we got this some, some kind of idea that if God's really in the midst of us, we feel some kind of supernatural thing. Right. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know he's in the midst of you based on what that book says. Yeah. And the book says, if you've got at least two or three gathered together in his name for the right reason, he says, I'm showing up. Yeah. And he's here. And if you got Christ, you've got everything that you need. God works in small crowds. And I'm glad that he does. And I tell you, I hope and pray that this, when I come back sometime, if the Lord's not back, 
that this thing double and triples in size, it would be wonderful. Or maybe we're in an entirely different building, and that would be great. But let me tell you something. It won't mean that God's more in the church or bigger then than he is now. Do you understand that? Don't lose sight of what he's doing now and what you have now. Because I'm telling you, we're getting into the last days and the last mile of the way. And, and it's going to become even more and more difficult to find little fellowships of believers like this. And the fact that you're together and you love one another and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you've got a good pastor. I'm excited for your future. And I want you to be excited about your future. And I don't want you to focus on what you don't have and what they're doing over there and what they got and what you lost or what you would like to have because none of that matters. All you need is Christ. And when Christ is ready to give it to you, He will. And if He doesn't, it's because you don't need it. And I hope that that's an encouragement to you that we have a, we have a small crowd, but we have a big God. And... I am, again, excited to see what God's doing in this church. So let's bow our head and close our eyes. I know I see we have some already praying, and, and I don't know what you want to do as far as praying for yourself or praying for this church or praying for your pastor. But I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Aaron. I'm going to let him do the invitation as he sees fit. But I hope you'll get a hold of this today. I hope it'll encourage you. Now, some of you showed up this morning and said, I thought I was hoping Brother Dennis was going to preach at me. Well... You come back tonight, you'll get your wish granted, but, but I wanted to encourage you some this morning.